Uh, Fahim, I'm sorry, you will have to wait. They are ready for the live case, uh, if it's okay, uh, in China. Uh, and we'll Not have your talk after that. Not a problem. I know you have been there since morning, we really appreciate it, but um, <laughs> not much time left. So, no, we are going to problem. go live to uh, Dr. Uh, Chen's hospital, a Nanjing first hospital from China. And they have a very interesting case of trifurcation. And uh, Dr. V. Yu and uh, Fi Ye, I don't know if I pronounce it right, they will be doing the case. So, let's uh, go to China. Hello. Good morning. Can you hear us? Actually, yes, good. very clearly. Yeah, this is uh, Dr. Bashir Hanif. Uh, and uh, Dr. Uh, Shaolang Chen is sitting here. And uh, we have Dr. Suhail Aziz, Dr. Asad Pathan, Dr. Akhtar Ali Bandesha, and Dr. Abdul Samad on the panelists. And we have virtual panelists, uh, Dr. Fahim Jafri. Dr. Afsar Raza, Dr. Najib Azam, Dr. Hetam Amin, and uh, Dr. Imad Shaiban. So, welcome to Pakistan Live. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, so, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. And this is Nanjing uh, First Hospital. We are a uh, cardiologist working here for uh, Nanjing First Hospital and my boss is Dr. Sao Leong Chen, is very famous uh, expert in China, also in the, uh, all over the world, especially for the uh, bifurcation region. So today we will uh, uh, discuss uh, uh, trifurcation region of this left man and it's very interesting case. So uh, I'm Fei Ye from Nanjing First Hospital and uh, uh, my colleagues, Dr. Yu Wei and Dr. Uh, Wu Xiang Qi, will assist me to perform the PCR procedure for this case. So, uh, Dr. Yu and Dr. Wu will introduce the uh, characteristics of the, this patient first. Would you please? Okay, thank you, Chief. Uh, dear moderators, panelists, and audience, uh, good morning. Uh, we are very happy to show this lab case. Uh, please show me the uh, PPT. Okay, next uh, slide, please. So, our patient. Is Next, please. Next slide. Our patient is the 58 years old gentleman. He was admitted to our hospital for the chest pain for four months. He has diabetes and high hypertension. And uh, three months ago, the patient uh, uh, was diagnosed as the old uh, inferior myocardial infection and uh, performed the angiography, uh, emergency angiography, but showed that the chubb vessel disease so transmitted to our hospital. Uh, after his remission, we just uh, test the patient's the uh, uh, some test. Uh, the cardiac biomarkers is all negative. The patient has a good renal function and echo shoes. The patient also have the very good uh, cardiac function with the EF sixty-three uh, percent. But ECG showed that the old the uh, old inferior or myocardial infection. Next, please. Uh, so after the optimized drug treatment, we performed the uh, coronary angiography for this patient one week ago. As you can see, uh, the right coronary uh, seems only might more relation uh, from the uh, middle segment and the two segment of IC. But this though PL, uh, I think is a lesion and with the severe stenosis, uh, this uh, it's the right dominant vessel. Uh, next, please. So this is the. Uh, uh, spider view and uh, the uh, AP cordial, you can see very clearly, uh, just like Professor Yi have told us, it's the very complex distal left wing trifurcation lesion with the Medina 0111. And uh, also, you can see, uh, according to Professor Chen's uh, definition uh, criteria, uh, it just qualified uh, at least one major uh, criteria and uh, at least uh, three minor criteria. So, distal left wing trifurcation lesion uh, is the very complex uh, trifurcation lesion defined as the definition criteria. Next slide, please. The uh, IO cranial and uh, the uh, LA cranial shield, the patients also have the uh, LED and the first diagonal, also another uh, bifurcation lesion so with the Medida, also uh, 1112 bifurcation lesion. But the, uh, according to Professor Chen's definition criteria, it's just this the simple bifurcation lesion. Uh, in our case, next slide, please. In our center, we, we routinely perform uh, the uh, risk score for this kind of very uh, uh, high risk level patient. Syntax will also tell us the patient is the high risk patient. Uh, and the syntax score to show the uh, four years mortality for PCI 
uh, nearly five, uh, a little bit lower when compared with the cabbage. Uh, before our OEA uh, made the decision for the patient strategy, we uh, just consult with the surgeons, but the patient family strongly against the cabbage. Uh, they choose the uh, PCI. So next, please. Uh, one week ago, we just deal with the uh, calculation of the distal uh, PL. You can see uh, a stand uh, 2.5, uh, by 38 long these years deployed the Chinese domestics then deployed in the distal PC and the flow good stand expands very well. So today our target is left corny artery two bifurcating lesions, especially the complex distal leaving trifling lesions. Uh, so that's our key point today. That's all thank you. So could you show uh, could you see the today's angel on the screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, so, so we, if we yes, can... We, uh, we just recheck the angle for the patient for the left coronary artery. And now we just want to get some recommendation from the experts, uh, Dr. Hari. Yeah, sure. So I'll, I'll uh, ask uh, the panelists, uh, if I may request uh, Dr. Salman Arai and uh, Dr. Farhan Tayyab to come up to the stage also, please. So, uh, Dr. Bhatan, so how would you approach uh, this patient or what would you do? Well, uh, I, I guess if you're presuming that these lesions are severe, uh, you know, it's, it's a very challenging case. It's a left main trifurcation and there's a early diagonal branch which is not small. So one will have to deal with all of these. There's also mid-circumflex disease and there's a big OM and I, I think angiographically it's at least moderate in severity and needs to be dealt with. Uh, so if I am committed on PCI, Although I think this was a very high syntax score, perhaps upfront cabbage would have been a good option over here. But if I am committed to PCI, uh, then you know this is a clear cut uh, uh, two stent bifurcation case to the left main uh, and stent all in the circumflex all the way down to the OM and deal with the ramus and the diagonal branches provisionally just to not make it too complex. And based on Dr. Chen's results, it's a uh, clearly a DK crush case, so, and it has to be IVAS guided. So would you like to elevate the left anterior descending artery further to see if it is really significant or this angiographically you think it's uh, significant to intervene? Uh, well, I, I think there's enough disease that, I mean, the circumflex ostium looks severe and there's no way you can treat the circumflex without coming into the left main. And once you are in the left main, this LED will be difficult to tackle. So I think based on the definition criteria for complex bifurcation, both branches have uh, at least 60-70% disease. The LED lesion is clearly longer than 10 millimeters. So I think this is a complex left main, in fact, a trifurcation. So uh, I think you already committed up front to two stents. Dr. Amin, um, what, what would you, do you have any comments? What would you do? I think with the trifurcation, we have to try to avoid making it more complex than it actually is. So I would definitely, you know, avoid the three stents. That's definitely something that we have to, uh, you know, dissuade because of all the um, uh, complications, restenosis, uh, et cetera. So I think a two stent strategy would probably be the best, taking the biggest branches that we have. I agree that, that the osteo circumflex is more complex, so probably that would be the, the branch I would tackle first. And then, and then if the stent goes into the, uh, into the left main, I, I could either tap the, uh, you know, put a, use a tap technique for the, uh, for the, uh, for the uh, LED, or if the vessel size is enough, uh, you know, you, you could actually do a collot. And then, and then you could balloon the the, oh. the, the ramus, but, but just avoid avoid stenting the ramus. So, so, so that would be my my approach. Uh, the, the circumflex first, uh, do either a tap or a pull out into the LED, make sure everything is fine. Uh, balloon, you know what they call as you know trissing. You, you know you could do you know three balloon. Uh, you know uh, instead of final kissing, you could, you could do a trissing, which is three three balloons, but uh, avoid stenting the ramus. So, Doctor Raza. Yes, uh, I think this is a very good and complex uh, challenging case and uh, we have extensive disease involving the left main trifurcation and also the uh, LED bifurcation. So I think we can address in two stages the left main bifurcation, uh, sorry, the LED bifurcation we can do later 
But this trifurcation is very challenging, I think, by definition criteria, as already been described by uh, uh, Asad, that he has a very complex disease involving trifurcation, and the brunt of the disease in the uh, circumflex ostium and the uh, intermediate. So what I think we should do the imaging as well to see if there is any calcification or any burden, so we have to debulk the lesion. And uh, we definitely avoid three stents because the data is not very strong, is not in favor of three stents because there are more events uh, associated with three stents. So we'll do two stents, for prefer preferably any, I think, but preferably the data is more in favor of DK crash. And we can do the uh, drug eluting balloon uh, plasty to the uh, uh, intermediate. I think Dr. Chen sitting here, everyone is going to go for DK crash, it's his lab, so. Uh, Najib, uh, would you do some anything yes. different? No, I mean, I'll, I'll wire all three, Primus, LED, circ. I think you have to pre-dilate circ and then do the uh, IVUS and then take it from there. Uh, uh, yes, DK crush may be a good option, but I don't think you can make the final decision before you, after pre-dilatation and, uh, and uh, look at the items. Uh, yes, try to avoid anything to, uh, to Ramus, but you have to wire it. Fame, would you do what I was uh, before starting or you will pre-dilate and then I was and decide what would be your strategy? So yes, uh, kind, of, kind of echo what everyone has said, seven French guide, wire everything. Uh, I would probably, I was the circumflex and the LED up front. Uh, I wouldn't uh, touch the ramus unless it goes down in a ball of flames. Plan to stand the LED left main and circumflex. Uh, my ch our choice is DK crush usually. Diagonal, I would just uh, balloon it and DCB it and only stent it if it's a rescue. Uh, I would avoid doing uh, a trifurcation intervention um, you know, with a 10-foot pole because the geometry of a trifurcation set of stents just doesn't make any sense. And the flow is not going to be very non-laminar, very turbulent, and just a setup for uh, stent thrombosis in the, in, in the long run. So that would be my approach for this case. So with the uh, DK crush, um, like at least uh, three layers of stent at just at the ramus, would you be concerned that might be a problem if you have to go back or it closes off? Are you asking me? Yeah. No, I would do DK crush uh, left main circumflex. I wouldn't do, uh, I said I wouldn't touch the ramus. The ramus I would only go and rescue if I start losing flow, rescue it with a 1.0 or 1.5 balloon uh, and just leave it. Um, if I have to rescue something, it would be the diagonal with a stent just because of the geometry of it. Okay, Dr. Ye, go ahead, tell us what you are planning and what you have done so far. Yes, according to a lot of experts at uh, recommendation, we'll also check with the IVAS before predilation. And uh, Dr. Penn will uh, interpret the IVAS result of the uh, whole uh, left coronal artery, including LED and uh, circumflex and the ramus. Dr. Penn, would you please inter interrupt the uh, IVAS result first? Okay, let me show the IVAS imaging. Can you see the IVAS imaging? Yes, we can see it. Dr. Hari? Yes, we can yes. see the IVAS. Okay. Uh, okay. The first one, we check IVAS from the distal LED to left main. In the distal LED, we can see a muscle bridge. Then go and pull back. Near the muscle bridge, we can see the vessel is normal. Then go and pull back here. We can find the, the distal landing zoo is normal. And here, the vessel diameter about 3.2 millimeter. Then go and pull back, we can see eccentric plaque. Go and pull back here, we can find the bifurcation. And here, the, the side branch is the septal. So the distal landing zoo is over the LED and the septal bifurcation, four millimeter. Then go and pull back. <coughs> this is the middle LED. And here, we can see calcified plaque. And the plaque calcification angle is a lot more than 180 degree. Then go and pull back here, we can find another uh, bifurcation. And here, this is the uh, diagonal one and the LED bifurcation. Then go and pull back here. This is the uh, pro proximal LED. Then go and pull back. Here, the proximal LED vessel diameter is more than 4.1 millimeter. Then go on. And here, we can see attenuation plaque and the calcified plaque. The calcified calcification angle is uh, about 180 degree. Then here we can see 
the gut while certain flex will join L8, join left main. And here, this is the ultimate LED. And here, the area is just 3.1 millimeter square. And the plug burden is more than 75%. Then go on here, this is the POC. Then go on, pull back here, this is the distal left main. And in this point, the distal left main, the area is just 4.5 five millimeter square and the plug burden is more than 79 percent and here we can see the classification angle is more than 300 degrees but the lumen diameter mean diameter is a more than 2.0 millimeter then go on pull back here this is the body left man and the body left man we can see here the plug rupture yeah, then go and pull back. The body left man vessel diameter about more than 4.7 millimeter. Then go pull back here. We can see this is the ostium left man. We measure the mini, uh, measure uh, the nettiness from the distal landing loop to ostium circumflex is uh, about uh, 46 millimeter. And from the this the landing loop to LED and the diagonal bifurcation, the nettiness is about 16 millimeter. Go on. The second round, we check uh, Ivers from the distal circumflex to left main. And here we can see the distal circumflex vessel is normal. And distal vessel diameter about 1.6 millimeter. Then go on, pull back here, we can find the eccentric plug. And then here we can find the side bench where joins second flex. The side bench is uh, PL. So the distal land, normal landing rule uh, is over the side bench uh, about four millimeter. Then go on pull back, we can see attenuation plaque. Then go on. Here this is the proximal second flex. And here we can see another septal where join Second flex, the septal is OM. Then go on, pull back. This is the proxima. Second flex. Then go on. Here we can find the normal vessel in the proxima. Second flex, the vessel diameter about 3.2 millimeter. Then go on, pull back. We near the ostium second flex. Here we can see the guide wire. LED guide wire will join. Left main. And here, this is the ostium of the second flex. And here, the area is just 2.2 uh, millimeter square. And the plug burden is more than 80%. And here, the plug is uh, uh, a classification uh, plug. And the plug angle is uh, about 180 degrees. Uh, and uh, the, we make sure the lateness from the distal landing rule to ostium circumflex is about 44 millimeter. Uh, and the lateness from the distal landing rule to uh, circumflex and the OM bifurcation is about 15. Okay, and the second round we check uh, I was from Ramos to left main. And the distal Ramos is normal. The vessel diameter is about 2.6 millimeter. Then go on, pull back, we can see eccentric plug. And then go on. Here, this point is the minimal lumen area. And the area is just 1.4 millimeter square. And the plug burden is more than 76%. And here we can see uh, spotty calcium and the attenuation plug. So the plug is an uh, uh, unable plug. Then go on, pull back. This is the proximal ramus. Then go on back here and near the ostium ramus. And here we can see the side branch guide wire where it joins left main. And here this point is the ostium ramus. The area is just 1.6 millimeter and the plug burden is about 67 percent. And the nettiness from the distal landing to ostium ramus is about 23 millimeter. Okay, this is a baseline I've seen imaging. Thank you. So thanks, thanks Dr. Pence. Interpretation of the IOS result is any changes of the recommendation yeah. from the experts? Thank you very much, uh, Salman. Um, you have seen uh, the case. So would you change your strategy after looking at the uh, IOS? Yeah. Uh, I think so the assumption is that the 
Okay, so Ivis was very telling, and I agree with whoever suggested that we should do Ivis before even angioplasting anything. I think one thing I like to do is to simplify this trifurcation into the two bifurcations that matter, right? So there's a major bifurcation between the LAD and the circumflex, and then there's a minor bifurcation between the ramus and the circumflex. So my personal approach, based on the IVUS that we see today, would be to do a, a jail balloon stenting of the circ ostium, extending it out into the left main, and then making sure that the ramus is preserved, and then do a DK crush in the left main LAD system. Um, that would be my approach, just because I think the disease in the ramus is extensive, but the branch is small, and it's not as calcific, so maybe just gentle ballooning will preserve it. Um, and ultimately, if you're left with some disease in the ramus, that's fine, because you'll be left with single vessel disease or minor, you know, uh, moderate blockage, that's fine. But three stents would be maybe a little too much at this location. No, so El? Um, yeah, I think uh, three stents have never been a good idea. And to get three balloons down there, trishing uh, eight trench can probably take it. Uh, to me, the LED is the most important bit. I'd first deal with that. Uh, it's a good LV, young man. Uh, so you've got to do a job as good as surgery. You can't take any chances with the in table. So you've got to make sure they do your uh, LED first and bring the stand back. And then, uh, you know, uh, even if you do a jail balloon, finally when you do a DA crush, you'll be doing so much inflations there that the circ's going to get, you can't have the jail balloon uh, there and do a DK crush, you'll have to take it out anyway. Yeah, so I'd probably just deb it and then take it out. Uh, and then I'd do a DK crush on the circumflex. And you know, the circumflex is a big vessel distally and there's a lesion proximal to that. So the stent in circ will have to be long one right from the OM, distal OM, right up there. Saran, do you have any comments? I will just wire the obtuse marginal branch and uh, try and reopen. If we have a compromised blood flow, then we can pass a bullet and open it up and do a tap there. Otherwise, DK crush. Just have a wire in the obtuse marginal branch. Dr. Bandesha, do you have any? Yes. Uh, DK crush and uh, stand to LED and circumflex is okay, but because of the high mortality uh, with the syntax 2 score actually, uh, I would go for the ballooning of the ramus branch as well as the diagonal branch uh, with the diagloting balloon. Now one must remember that the LED is a bifurcation, it's a very major bifurcation, huge diagonals. So Dr. that Sam has to be dealt properly. Dr. Samad, uh, I just, uh, if you were doing the cath in the beginning, would you have sent this patient for a complex angioplasty or sent for surgery? This audience uh, belongs to one <laughs> political party. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and if you talk about the other political party, they are going to hoot you out. <laughs> So I have to, uh, you are, I am sitting in front of them, so everything is going to come on my face. So, but I will tell you that I heard that this famous is a small vessel. I tell you the, what counts in this age and time is the nuisance value, not the beneficial value in the society doesn't matter. It is the nuisance value of the person which matters. And this small vessel, if you do it on the patient is going to come after a week. I have told you that you have to do it for 4 lakh rupees. I will tell you She will say that you have to do it for 4 lakh to do it for 4 lakh rupees. The patient. For the patient, it is the symptom which matters. If you mortality a Muslim, then there is no mortality. Okay. If you are a Muslim, then you understand that the mortality is God's name. What can the doctor do? That's why you are talking about the mortality. Coronary mortality and other mortality. I don't think that the patient who is in front of me, it matters for him. Yes, this is the truth that you have to tell the patient बड़ी बेटे को जो मजबूत है उसको समझाना है भाई ये देखो इसमें थोड़ा खतरा खतरा हो सकता है फिर वो आपसे पूछेगा कि डॉक्टर साहब अब हम क्या करें 
जो हम कहते हैं भाई दवाइयों से तो काम हुआ ही नहीं अभी यही एक रास्ता रहता है इसमें खर्चा भी है और थोड़ा खर्चा भी अगर आप लोग कहते हैं हम करते हैं सो अट आई विल टेल यू कि स्मॉल ब्रांच या डाइगनल हो या जो है वो है मो उसको आपने खोलने की कोशिश कर रही है और ये कोशिश करें कि फौरी बंद ना हो जाए एक महीने में दो महीने में बंद हो गया तो आपके आपके उसमें आएगा तो आप उसको ड्रग एड्यूटिंग बलून से इसको करें क्योंकि मेरे ख्याल में तीन स्टेंट आप इसमें डालेंगे ना तो ये बहुत मुश्किल है कि ये एक महीना जो है ये सिम्टम फ्री रहे इसमें किसी में या क्लाट बन जाएगा या कोई ना कोई जो है कोई ना कोई स्टेंट जो है वो जो है वो दब जाएगा आपने तीन बलून इकट्ठे डाल के उसको इन्फ्लेट भी किया फिर भी मेरा ख्याल है कि ऑप्टीमल रिजल्ट जो है मैं आपको एक आखिरी बात करना चाहता हूँ जो हमारा चीफ था कार्डियालोजी का वो हजरत इसहाक की औलाद में से था तो ये इसहाक की औलाद बहुत टर्चुअस है वो बहुत ही होशियार है मैं इनके साथ सात साल गुजारे हैं वो कहता था यू कैन डू एनी थिंग यू वॉन्ट इफ यू हैव एनफ फंड एंड एनफ टाइम एंड एक्सपर्टाइज टू डू इट यू कैन डू एनी थिंग डू इट एक्चुअल क्वेश्चन इज शुड यू डू इट और यू शुड नॉट डू इट thank you thank you so much sir may uh, further to your comments uh, i always learn a lot from your very nicely put uh, you know uh, narrations and uh, i think i become wiser with that uh, but i think this trafication if it doesn't go down during the procedure it's not going to go down later uh, they tend not to go down and uh, there is a that's why i think if the diagnosis go looking good the oms looking good this will be covered so i think uh, symptoms for okay. uh, elevated chance of uh, om trafication going down is not a lot So okay, uh, I just had one quick thing which nobody okay, mentioned is lesion modification. There was a fair bit of calcium in the LED ostium and the cerc ostium. In fact, the cerc ostium looked like two seventy degrees, although rather focal. So I would at least pre-dilate with a scoring or cutting balloon. I think the lumen was too big for no. atherectomies. Okay, Doctor Ye, uh, can you tell us yes. uh, what you have done and uh, okay. what's the um, plan? Uh, about a bit about yes. scoring balloon. I think the advantage scoring. So we we will show you our plan and our uh, procedure we like have uh, finished. Balloon. So it first, we uh, depending on the uh, I was result, we pre-dilate the uh, so this uh, uh, circumflex with a uh, two o balloon and uh, proximal uh, circumflex, and uh, we put a, a two five stent to cover the uh, this uh, uh, circumflex. Now you can see the stent for expansion. After that, we uh, want to use a uh, stand balloon to pre-dilate the circumflex, but it failed. So we use a uh, 3O NC balloon to pre-dilate the circumflex uh, secondary, and we can find the uh, balloon expansion well. So after that, we uh, want to uh, treat the uh, middle part of the LED first with another wire to protect the diagonal. Even though we find that there is a severe stenosis and the calcification at the uh, diagonal uh, site, we also use a wire to protect the uh, diagonal. We, uh, after two five uh, NC balloon pre-dilation, we put a, a three O uh, stent six, uh, twenty-six stents, yes, to cover the uh, middle part of the LED to the proximal part. We can see the stent for expansion and the uh, diagonal was uh, preserved very well. After that, we uh, use uh, a three-five cutting balloon to post to pre-dilate the distal part of the uh, left main. Just because I was told us that the, there is a, a ring-shaped calcification at the distal part of the left main. After that, we can see the lesion was prepared well, and we check the angle, find that the ramus was severe stenosis after pre-dilate with the osteo uh, circumflex and the circum uh, osteo AD. We use a two overlong to pre-dilate. We don't we don't want to put a stand in the ramus. We also want to use a DK crush technique, especially um, very famous. Uh, and we was taught by um, Professor Sao Liang Chen. And uh, we also uh, uh, put another stand from osteo circumflex uh, to the uh, uh, middle part of the circumflex with a three O. Stand a twenty three a twenty three domestic drug yeah, domestic stand. Drug. Yeah. yeah. China. After that, we use a three-five uh, NC balloon to want to perform the first crush. Just because there is a mismatch between the proximal LED and the left main. The proximal LED uh, reference diameter was about three-five to four o, but the uh, left main was uh, four five. So that's why we use a two uh, NC two balloon to perform a two-step crush. 
One is a three five from the first crash. Another look at this. This is a very special balloon for the uh, pot uh, designed by uh, Professor Sao Lantern. We can see this kind of balloon with a very harsh balloon and a very short shooter. And uh, the lens was very short, especially for the left main personalization and the pot. And uh, decay crash means uh, crash for the left main. This uh, size of the balloon was four five. Four five diameter. Yes, lens was uh, six six. So this is a very special balloon for pot and for uh, constellation. Uh, so, so after that, we will check the angel. We find the located here. So, so which we check the angel. Did you use? Which stands uh, were used? Stand three O uh, of twenty three. Twenty three for from the uh, austere circumflex to the middle part of the circumflex, and the very. Just one, maybe one millimeter or two millimeter protruding to the left main. After that, we use uh, two crush tactics. One, one is a three five, and uh, another is a four five pot balloon to perform first crush. After that, we will rewind. Okay, talk please. Talk please. So, what kind of stands were they? A Chinese domestic stand. Uh, does the LED ostium look Fiber. under deployed? Yes. Ostium and proximal LED looks like under deployed. Uh, are you okay with it, or you will decide after the IVAS? Okay, after re after Ryan, we check the IVAS. Yes. I think they haven't okay. stented the proximal. They're going to stent left main to LED now. Yeah. There was, there's a stent yes. mid LED. Yes. Just the balloon. Abhi to pehla ke. So we can check if we have time. We will check the IVAS. Yeah, so the, it's very important that we, when we perform a, a DK crush for the first rewind, first rewind from the proximal part of the side branch. So we, will, we can check, yes. So any yes, specific wire you use to recross? Any any particular wire preference to recross the crush tank? Just, no, 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 just a uh, workhorse wire. Oh, In our hospital, we want, uh, so first wire is uh, uh, BMW, BMW wire. Yeah. The second choice is the uh, Johnson wire. We don't want to use a hard fit wire. Mm -hmm. The, the so, very important uh, procedure issue is, uh, it's very important to use a large balloon. Uh, Based on the I was finding, yeah. the same size of the left main. So, so the short balloon you used no, no, in the no. left main, that was just to crush the surf stand? Go back. Yeah, I will go back. Yeah, it, they call it a pot crush, Bashir, which means they put a big balloon uh, and crush the proximal stand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the first crushing balloon you size for the LED, but it's too small for that the left main, so you don't crush it. So you do a pot to crush the left main. Okay. Yeah, proximus, yeah. Okay. So, could you see the eye was on the screen, and the, from the vessel, we can find the first reward from the proximal part of the yeah, side is, branch, it means the proximal part of the circumflex. Yeah. After that, uh, we can find another uh, very, yes, yeah, if very you can, uh, uh, useful phenomenon. We, we can use the uh, NC balloon same size to the circumflex to cross uh, to the circumflex very easily. Doctor Ye, if it is okay, so you do this. This, one, this IVAS is to look and to see where you're crossing from. Uh, is that the yes, idea? Of the yes. I see. Yes. This is jet wire. Doctor Ye, is it okay if we go to a talk and come back to you like in ten minutes? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let's uh, have Fahim, um, you finish your talk and then we'll go back and see what they have done and uh, see the final results. Okay. Can we, can we have you. Dr. Fahim stop, please? We should, they should have the recording. Yeah, I know that. They're, they're putting it on. Yeah, we will record. Okay. So we'll come back in 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes. Okay. Um, Everybody, um, thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, give this talk here today. Um, 
I'm very grateful to Bashir, uh, Zubair Akram, Tahir Sakir, and Nadeem Rizvi, and all the other uh, council members and, uh, and um, uh, organizers of this uh, wonderful conference, which just keeps getting better and better each year. I only have 10 minutes for this talk, and so my job is to talk about IVUS versus OCT and acute coronary syndromes. Um, I don't have any conflicts of interest uh, regarding this talk. Uh, let's be clear about one thing, and that uh, the data supporting imaging uh, to improve outcomes is pretty unequivocal. And, you know, whether you look at IVUS XPL trial uh, over one year or even five year follow up, 50% reduction in MACE, 70% reduction in MACE if you get optimal stenting, the ultimate trial, a big trial, almost 50% reduction in MACE over a one year period uh, with, uh, you know, huge benefit if you achieved optimal PCI and the benefits extending over a three year period. Uh, and so it is pretty clear uh, that IVUS or imaging is important. And there are many of us who will still say, hey, I've got IVUS eyes, you know, I've got IVUS in my eyes, I can see everything, I don't need it. And the answer is no, you don't. Um, you know, data is data. And, you know, even in the best of hands, the angiogram can sometimes be misleading. And so it's just important to keep it in mind. Yes, there are cost constraints and whether that balances out the, the uh, for the benefits, that's something that we can always debate. But that is what the data shows now. And the guidelines give it a two way. I think by the next time the guidelines come out, it will probably be a class one indication. Now, the question is that does OCT have an incremental value when you're talking about acute coronary syndrome? And the answer is perhaps. Um, we know that both IVUS and OCT give excellent information for vessel sizing, uh, you know, plaque morphology, and then stent expansion, stent apposition, uh, you know, uh, what kind of plaque you have. All that information is pretty similar. Uh, and to some in, and to some extent, I, uh, OCT has some advantages, while IVUS has some other advantages. But the question is that are there a few scenarios where OCT may actually excel over IVUS once you've done your angiogram? And I think there are a few such scenarios, starting with, um, you know, a situation where you see disease, but you don't know what the culprit is, or you don't see anything and somebody has come with an acute coronary syndrome or an MI. Or when you're trying to, you know, confirm whether this is spontaneous coronary artery dissection or SCAD. Or you see clot, but you don't know where it came from. Did it come from within the artery? Or is it embolic? Or is it something else? And then sometimes you're in this weird situation where you don't know what the hell you're looking at on the angiogram. And so hopefully in the next few minutes, I'll be able to sort of show you some of these scenarios and try to convince you that in some situations, uh, OCT may have some advantages. Now, uh, number one, you can't really see the culprit. And this is a classic scenario where you've got diseased artery, so there's no doubt there's coronary artery disease, but the flow is good and you don't know whether that's the culprit. And so this is a case we took care of almost eight years ago. A 60-year-old man with classic central chest pain goes to his GP first. The GP finds ST elevation on his EKG, which we didn't get to see, but that's what the report said. When he came to the emergency room, his chest pain had settled and his EKG was normal, but his troponin was high. And we took him to the cath lab appropriately. And you can see that there is this sort of long, diffuse, moderate disease in the LAD. And under no circumstances is it really tight, but it's just long, diffuse, moderate, good flow in the LAD. Here's another view, good flow in the LAD, good flow in the right cornea artery. And so we weren't sure whether the LAD, the LAD was the culprit. Um, and so we did an OCT. And I just want you to focus your attention to the proximal part of the OCT where I slow it down over here. And you can see a lot of plaque pr prior to this. But when you come to the proximal LED, you can see in just a second that there's a whopping uh, sort of dissect. There's thrombus over there. And then you see a whopping plaque rupture and dissection right over there with a cavity. This is an acute plaque rupture. And then there's additional cavities up north over here. So that was clearly the culprit. And so this was, and you, this just shows shown over here. And you can see that at D, all you see is just kind of a little bit of a narrowing, but you don't see something as horrendous as this. Uh, and this was then appropriately stented with a good result on ang angiography, as well as a good result on OCT, which you know I'm not going to show you. Scenario two, where you patient comes with an ACS and there is nothing on the angiogram. So minoca, myocardial infarction with no obstructive coronary artery disease. And this is a, a case that uh, my colleague, Dr. Randall Lowe, who I borrowed this slide from, and I uh, did just uh, 
A few weeks ago, 29-year-old man, previously well, no past history, physically very active, playing basketball, has crushing chest pain. And the EKG, you can see, looks pretty normal, nothing much. So we took him to the cath lab on the basis of his symptoms. And you can see over here, the left side looks pretty normal. I, you know, we didn't see much initially. It looks pretty normal here. And I'll show you the cranial views. Looks very normal. Nothing, you know, maybe some, you know, mild or minimal thing up here in the mid LED. But otherwise, looks pretty normal with good flow. The right coronary artery, very normal. And we did an LV angiogram. And it looks normal too. No Takusubo. So based on the angiogram, we've ruled out acute plaque rupture or stenosis. We've ruled out spontaneous coronary dissection. There's no vasospasm. There's no Takasuba cardiomyopathy. So what is going on? But on closer inspection, we then looked at the angiogram again, and we noticed something in the septal. There was a filling defect or, or a lesion in the septum. Now, you don't get isolated septal lesions, and we maybe try to convince ourselves that there might be something going on in the proxality that we're not seeing, but we weren't sure. So we did an OCT, and I want you to just show you what the OCT showed. There is the septal up here, and just proximal to the septal right there, there is thrombus due to a plaque erosion. I let it play out, and there's mild atherosclerotic plaque uh, under that or proximal to that. And so this was an example of a plaque erosion, a probable plaque erosion. And I'll tell you why I say probable. We, because he was so young, we did an embolic and a hypercoagulable workup, and that was all negative. And the treatment was medical because the MLA was very good. And I just want to show you why I say probable, because definite plaque erosion is thrombus with an intact uh, plaque underneath. We kind of saw thrombus and we couldn't see beyond it. Um, but we did not see a cavity either. So it's not plaque rupture. It's probable plaque erosion. And it's important to make that decision, the distinction between plaque erosion versus plaque rupture because the treatment of plaque erosion is really medical, whereas the treatment of plaque rupture is usually to put in a stent to stabilize it. Um, and so, um, you know, when you look at the guidelines for Minoka, coronary imaging is considered to be an important part of it. Um, and, and that's what we did. So now scenario three, where you have a situation where you think it's SCAD or, and we don't know. So this is a young woman comes with chest pain, whopping anterior SC elevation. And that's what her angiogram looked like. This patient we took care of 10 years ago. So I will admit that, um, if this patient came, Presently, we would probably have just done nothing and treated it as SCAD, but at that time we weren't sure. So we did an OCT and clearly you can see on OCT there is an intramural hematoma squishing the lumen. This is clearly SCAD and this is 2014. We actually ended up putting a BVS and the patient did okay, but in the current time I would probably just leave it and do nothing. And SCAD, when you're suspecting it, it has a two-way indication for imaging uh, in the literature. Scenario four is when you have an ACS and there's clearly clot in the artery, but you don't know where the hell it came from. Is it embolic or is it atherosclerosis or is it plaque erosion? So this is an elderly woman, 83, inferior STEMI, clear cut, no question about it. Uh, the left has clear disease. Uh, you know, you, so this patient has atherosclerosis. That's not the issue. But on the right, we see this big time thrombus in the distal RCA, no question about it. We went ahead and aspirated, got clot out. And then after that, the vessel looks clean and normal. So then the question is, what is going on? Is it, is it uh, plaque rupture, which we would need to stand, or is it erosion or something else? So we did an OCT, and I'm just going to play the OCT of the distal RCA. And you can see that this is a very clean-looking right coronary artery. There is fibrous plaque that is intact. There is no plaque rupture. Very, very clean-looking artery, as you can see over here. Uh, and so our feeling was that this might be embolic, and so we, we did a workup and the patient has a PFO. The patient has a spontaneous contrast or smoke in the left atrium. We treated this patient with anticoagulation and antiplatelet therapy and fixed the LED at a later time. So in the last minute, uh, if, you, if you bear with me, uh, the final scenario is where number five, you don't know what the heck, heck it is. So this is a 65-year-old man who comes in with no chest pain, but dyspnea, diaphoresis, a very elevated troponin. His EKG shows... You know, maybe some anterior changes, but really non-diagnostic, some lateral changes, incomplete left bundle branch block. Um, and I want you to now look at the angiogram in sequence. And we only saw something in the prox LED right over here that looks like this in just one view, uh, just proximal to the diagonal. 
And in the other views, we really see nothing. We see just like a stubular plaque with moderate to severe lesion, but unclear whether this is the culprit. And you know, just show you one more view, and it kind of shows the same thing. I um, mean, in the interest of time, I'll just go to the uh, to the uh, the uh, IVUS, and the IVUS shows you can see the diagonal coming in, and then there is plaque, but that's about it. It is not diagnostic. We don't know what it is. Uh, we then did an OCT. And you can see again now, uh, here, you know, here comes the diagonal in a second. Um, and, and you see that when the diagonal comes in immediately after that, we see what, what is clearly a plaque rupture, okay? So very different from what we see on the iris. And I'll play these side by side. This is the iris, the diagonal coming in. And after that, we see plaque, that's it. Here's the OCT. The diagonal's coming in, we're playing this in slow motion, for, and then immediately after that is a plaque rupture. And so this made the diagnosis that the etiology was plaque rupture, and this is a case done by my colleague, Dr. Randall Lowe and Dr. Ho, and what they did was uh, got a beautiful result by stenting the LAD uh, and DCB to the diagonal, and the patient did well. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, using image to guide PCI has a significant impact on MACE. The data is unequivocally clear. In general, IVUS and OCT are interchangeable, and the guidelines support that. It's a class 2A for both. But in certain situations, like hopefully the ones that I've illustrated to you, especially in ACS, OCT may have some advantage by showing things a bit more clearly. But it is important, I think, for operators to be familiar with both IVUS and OCT uh, because they are complementary to each other rather than, than mutually exclusive. So ladies and gentlemen, um, I thank you for your time, and I apologize for going a little bit over, and I'll be happy to answer any questions if they are. Thank you. Fahim, thank you very much. Uh, as always, um, outstanding talk. Um, I think we have to uh, move on to the case. Maybe after that we can have a uh, uh, couple of questions or comments uh, from the panelists. So let's go back to China to see where they are and what they have done. Dr. Ye, we are back to you, so if you could show us what you have done. Yes, thank you very, very much for Dr. Hari. And we will show you the next procedure. So after standing as a, the circumflex, so we use a two-step crush with a three, five, uh, first crush, and the second is a uh, pot balloon with a four, five balloon. So legs, we just uh, perform the second crush near the crina from the angel. After that, we perform the second wiring to the circumflex with the proximal part of the circumflex ocean. After that, we perform a 3 nc balloon across the osteo circumflex very easily. We don't want to use a smaller balloon or a conventional balloon. We just use an old balloon, old NC balloon across the circumflex very easily. That's another indication for the wiring position is good. Uh, based on the uh, I was finding. So after that, we perform the first uh, kissing with uh, 3 O in uh, circumflex, 3 5 in LED. It's very easy. After that, we you put another stand with 3 5, uh, 26, 26 uh, uh, jockey dune stand across uh, area, proximal LED to the uh, left man. Just this is a 3 5 uh, stand. So in the uh, left man, is full tool on the expansion. After that, we use uh, the uh, old uh, pot balloon 4-5 to perform the po pot just near the grinder. We cannot uh, perform the uh, pot cross uh, to the LED. That's very important. We don't want to touch the grinder tip. After that, we perform the second rewind from the pressure part of the circumflex. After that, we use uh, the same NC balloon, 3-5, uh, 3 old so balloon, NC balloon, to cross the uh, secondary wine uh, to the circumflex easily. We don't want to use uh, another uh, a newer balloon, just the older balloon, perform the second uh, crossing, second kissing, up to that second pot. We just want to the second pot, the final pot, the so previous one. This is the final angel after uh, two stand uh, after the final, uh, kissing. final kissing. So we want to perform the final part. After that, we check it with the IVUS, and we show you the first final yeah. IVUS. Any comments so from the see. panelists? Uh, anyone? Uh, Salman? Well, that, that looks really good. Uh, OM is okay. Yeah. 
this new, the the diagonal doesn't look uh, very clear, but uh, I think they just did a provisional there and didn't uh, do anything. But I think it's a great result, excellent result. Excellent. So, so I'm, I'm concerned about the LED stent expansion, so I'd like to see the IVAS and see what the MSA is. But on the spider view, the LED look much smaller than the circ. Mm -hmm. So. Hey, this is, yes, the reuse the 4.5 pot balloon. I'm not no. sure if there's any advantage. It's a very small pot balloon. I mean, for left main, you can have a longer balloon. It can put it out, and you don't have to do multiple inflation. Multiple inflation is always an issue. So, Dr. Ye, did you post dilated yes. LED also, like proximally, uh, what size balloon you use to post dilate the LED stand? Just in the left hand with four five. Four five in the LED. LED, LED, LED we use three, three five. five. I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Did you post that it or no? The LED. Yeah, we post yes, that it. The LED use the three point five. Three point five. Okay. So, Dr. Raza, do you have any comments? Yes. You are mute. There is a question about the size of the left main. If the left main is very short, very short. So, what will be the strategy for what? Mm -hmm. Anyone, especially using the decay crush. Dr. Amin, uh, would you be concerned about that uh, Diag or Ramos or would you do anything to that? Okay. Well, well, I just want to ask I the was, question. They, they, use, they use a very short 6 millimeter uh, balloon to actually do the uh, part of the left main, which is short. My, my only question is, is the Ramos wire is jailed now? Because, uh, because I know when yes. they stood, yeah. So, so you have a yes. jailed Ramos wire. That, that, that will not facilitate coaxial uh, engagement of your guide. So what I would do is I would remove the jailed uh, Ramus wire. You'll be able to engage your your guide better and be able to get your, uh, you know, short okay. four or five, um, you know, uh, uh, pot balloon uh, easier. Uh, I, I think looking at the circ and the LED from the views we saw initially, the the mid LED with that bifurcation that looked fine it was a very good provisional. They actually did a pot uh, for, for the mid LED. It was fine. So I, yeah. I think the I think the the, the the case went very well. They just need to remove the jail wire and the ramus and they'll be able to do a final pot and the final ibis. So uh, I, I think just to okay. the, the jail really wire, go. you yeah. have to be careful because back. it can lead to your osteal stent deformation. This so you have to carefully it take it out, otherwise uh, the guide will just sit at the osteum and crush the stent. Okay, we will put back the jail wire in the ramus. With uh, angle tactic, after we check with uh, I was for the uh, LED to the left main. Yeah, the distal stand edge is normal, no dissection. The plug burden is not more than 50%. Yeah, look at the well opposed. Because the uh, stand uh, mean diameter is more than 3.0 millimeter. So I mean, the uh, mid part of the LED landing zone is very well with uh, nearly normal uh, part, normal position. And uh, approximately we can see the uh, diagonal was preserved very well. So we want to check the angles of the left, this left, left man and the left man's shot. This is the approximate LED? Yeah, approximate LED. I think the standard expansion is very well. In the meter is more than 3.5. Yeah. This is the bifurcation. Got a while. It's a distal left man. Just left man. Yeah. What's the diameter of the here? More 4.5. Yes. Yeah. It's the awesome. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Give me a three five NC balloon. Want to pull back the uh, Ramas wire? Send you the go yeah, tell you. Yes. We have, we have yeah.
I think, uh, Dr. Yee, we have only like a couple of minutes left. Uh, so what is your plan now? But she said, what about Omar's case? I'm sorry? What about Omar's Ramos case? Ramos wire, chair wire. What about? After Omar, that, we check the Omar Gustafian's case. So come back, so find on it. Yeah, we're going to go back there five minutes. So that's why I wanted to finish here and go back there. So you are, uh, what balloon you are using to post that? Sorry. Yeah, we have put study to the LED stand. We just want to pull back the wire. I think wire it's with using the, the balloon to yes. get the wire out. Yes. Yeah. We and I think that, conquering that's technique. really important, yes. uh, uh, you know, to not let the guide get sucked yeah. in. Uh, in our practice, we will often put a wire in the aorta, sort of a, like a, a floating wire to prevent the guide from getting yes. sucked in. Yes, um, floating wire is, is a, another very, very good option. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we are, we what we are protecting the left main stem uh, from being pushed in by the uh, guider when you pull it out is yeah. so to take one of the wire out, so put it in the sinus, yes. and then you pull it out. Yes. So, it, uh, so the guide does dive in. Anyone do anything more after looking at the IVERS? I think uh, stent looks uh, well yeah. opposed and well expanded. Looks good. So, Dr. Yi, I think uh, we have to stop here. Um, uh, thank you so much. It's a great case and excellent result. Uh, if you can show us maybe last image, call me Anjo, or uh, you are going to do Ivers again? Ivers or Anjo, if you want, yes. Okay, this is the last uh, LAD Ivers. Uh, LC Circle Ivers. Circle Ivers. Circle Ivers. Okay, that is the circle is no more. Okay, I think we have to leave, unfortunately. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, great case. Thank uh, you. A big uh, round of applause for uh, Dr. Chen and his Very team. Nice thank you so much thank you. Uh, for uh, being part of Pakistan Live for so many years. We really appreciate your time and uh, commitment. Thanks a lot. Okay, so if we can go to PIC quickly, just to see for five minutes only. So, Bashir, yeah. what, why are you going there? Just, uh, can I make a quick comment? I'm sorry, go ahead, uh, Najib. Uh, you know, when people t talk about oh, drug eluting balloon or balloon, uh, just a balloon dilatation to ramus. Yeah, so it's a bit, yeah. People need to be yeah. very careful because then if the vessel is yeah. comfortable for standing, then it's... Not to do it. Okay. 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 So I think uh, DC, TCP for the Ramas is a very good option. Turn on the volume, please. Good. Randy, it's important. Hold the volume. Dr. Octane, can you hear us? And they haven't been able to cross. Can I have something here? So we are we cannot hear. Can you hear us? PIC, can you hear us? Uh, turn on the volume. Turn up the volume, please. I was stop. Yeah, Anjum, yeah. if you could no. quickly tell no, us uh, you. where you are and what you have done. So we'll give the final uh, Anju. Yeah, over here. Uh, I yeah, will, yeah, we'll give the I final Anju. Yeah. Summarize. No, 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 Dr. Uh, Omar. Uh, so now we just cross. No, no. We just cross the lesion. Okay, by anti-greatly, retrogradely, the septals were very tortuous and we couldn't cross. So there were. Uh, uh, Tortuous and anteriorly we, we crossed it as a parallel bar technique. And now, um, like to show you uh, injection, we just cross it. And I like to insert my macrocatheter. We have difficulties with macrocatheter. I use um, macrocatheter from Brosmet the first time, but I don't like it. It's uh, very sticky and very long. So I don't like it. My Which extreme, wire you used? To... This is XT wire that I crossed. Right. Is it in the side branch? Let's see. If, uh, good injection down first. Sorry. Balloon. And then let's. You hear me, Sir Ramas? Sir, retrogradely you couldn't cross. It's in the side branch. Eh? Engage it. Apicoda. Yes. 
We were already in, but now we are in the side branch. Okay. Because we have oh. to change our back to catheter. Okay, ready. I don't know now. Let's see where am I now. Okay. So, so uh, Ramas, it means? Just uh, just which just side just branch? Yes, please. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. wait. Another wire. Yeah. Second across. Die is changed. Please put the die. No, no, we do not have the contrast. We let, let us change it. So you cross with XT change wire? Cross, please. Hurry, hurry. 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 Die yeah. change. Yeah. 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 Which wire did you use to cross, sorry? Sorry? Which wire was used to cross? Antigrade. Jean through wire. Jean through wire. This is. Are you talking to us? Uh, sorry. This is this is fielder XT right now. This is XT. Now. Fielder XT. Yeah. No, XT. XT. Yes. Tip injection. Wait, so wait. you know, uh, tip injection. So when we do our going. Yeah, we are in. So initially, uh, the Gaia third was used to puncture the proximal cap and the Gaia successfully navigated up till the distal cap. For re-entry, we had problem. We tried with the another parallel wire, which was again a Gaia third, but up. we could not be successful. Then we used the Pilot 200. You know, that was again not successful. And finally, Fielder XT find its way into the distal cap, and we have re-entered with that. And the plan was, was if this would not go, then uh, Dr. Umar planned that he would, he would use a knuckle wire. But luckily, this fielder XT has uh, gone into the distal true lumen, and you can see it's not, right now it's in the PLV. So, but we have a, uh, some issues here. The first one is sporting issues. Yeah, I have to change this balloon because we, it's a little bit long. I have to have some, the, the shorter one. And now I go more deeply because I have, I like to have better sport down. I like to change this balloon. I have a two or short balloon, eight, eight. eight. No, no, two or two or with shorter length. So let's, let's, because I couldn't cross my. Okay. Hello. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have to go now. Uh, it's. Um, I guess uh, lunch break, we have to get back again for the next session. Thank you very much okay. uh, for yeah, showing this case. Show uh, the final result great uh, trying retrograde next and session. then finally getting in anti-grade. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we are going to say goodbye and uh, go to the lunch break and we'll come back again after the lunch break. Thank you. You can probably That's show okay, us at that you. time what you finally did, Anjum. Okay, have Okay, thank you. I would like thank to you, thank sir. all the panelists and uh, it's a lunch break now. Please be back exactly at 2 o'clock so that we can start the next session. Thank you.